Hey guys, I wanted to walk you through some more examples of adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. If you think you know what you're doing and you wanna work through all these problems first, be my guest and then you can go through the video and see if we get the right answers um, together. So on this one here, three fourths and one eighth, we're gonna look for our LCD of four and eight first. Looking at multiples of four, four, eight, ding, ding, ding. I can stop here because these two guys are the same. I have a least common denominator of eight. So now I'm gonna look over here. Do I have to change one eighth so he can come to my fraction party? Nope, he's good just the way he is, but this guy needs a brand new outfit and he's gonna dress up as an eighth. Four times two is eight. Three times two is six. And now I can add these together because I have a common denominator of eight. Six plus one is seven. And the denominator always stays the same. And I'm done on this one because seven eighths can't be simplified. On this next one, I have one fourth and two thirds. I'm going to find the LCD of 3 and 4. Listing out multiples of 3. 3, 6, 9, nope, still doesn't work with 4. 12, ding, ding, ding. I know 3 times 4 is 12, so I can stop there. 4, 8, 12. This is my LCD. So I can start changing our fractions um, and creating equivalent fractions that are twelfths. So I'm going to plug in a 12 for the denominator on both of these guys here. i got to dress, dress them up for my fraction party. 4 times 3 is 12. Whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. Now I'm going to come down here. A lot of kids try to do times 3 and times 3. That makes no sense. 3 times 3 is not 12. 3 times 4 is 12. These numbers are going to be different between the two fractions, so be careful about doing that. Now I've got 4 times 2 is 8. And all I have to do is 3 plus 8, and I get 11 twelfths. And this one also cannot be simplified, lucky us. This one looks a little different than what we practiced yesterday. I've got 4 18ths and 5 6 I'm going to find my LCD. Always list the smaller number first. If you list 18 first, you're multiplying 18 times 1, 18 times 2, 18 times 3. That's a total pain. Don't do that. So we're going to start with the smaller number. List out multiples of 6. 6, 12, and then 6 times 3 is 18. So we don't have to do anything with the 18th because he can come to my party just like that. 5, 6 needs a brand new outfit. We're going to dress him up as an 18th and plug in times 3 here because I know 6 times 3 is 18. I have to do 5 times 3 here. And now I'm adding 4 eighteenths plus 15 eighteenths. 4 plus 15 is 19 eighteenths. And I'd love to say you're done, but now we have, uh-oh, improper fractions. We got a problem. So we're going to go out for ice cream, and that fixes everything. Put the ice cream in the freezer and shut the door. 18 will go into 19 one time, and you only have one left over. Your remainder comes up here and becomes your new numerator. The denominator dominates. He always stays the same. And your answer is 1 and 1 18th. I'm going to write it again because it's kind of squishy. These take a little bit longer, guys, but 
once you get the hang of it, you're not going to have to do all the ice cream cone stuff. You're just going to know what to do. This is just to help you see how you divide and take the remainder to find your new numerator. So now I'm going to shift gears and subtract on these. I like subtracting because I don't have to do all of this stuff. We're still going to look to see if we can simplify it. So on this one, I'm looking for an LCD of 4 and 6. I'm going to start listing out multiples of 4. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Still doesn't work with 6. Next one is 12. Here we go. 6 and 12 are friends because the next multiple of 6 is 12. Ding, ding, ding. We got a winner. So on this one, we're going to have to dress up both fractions. I've got to change them both into 12s. When I do that, 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9. 6 times 2 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. And this is where I have kids adding up 9 plus 2. Be careful. Pay attention. You're doing 9 minus 2 to get 7 twelfths. Always ask yourself, can I simplify? In this case, Nope, I've got a prime number of 7 here, and 7 and 12 have nothing in common. On the next one, I'm looking for an LCD of 2 and 7. 2, 4, nope, 6, 8. I'm going to save myself some time here. The only thing that's going to work with 7 is that 14. 7 times 2 is 14, and it's also a multiple of 2. If you see what it is, you don't have to list all of it out. Just go ahead and get to work on creating equivalent fractions. So we're going to dress these guys up as 14ths. Make those equivalent fractions. 7 times 2 is 14. Whatever you do to the bottom, the denominator, you have to do to the numerator up top. 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 7 is 14, 1 times 7 is 7, now I'm just subtracting, 10 minus 7 is 3, and 3 fourteenths is done, 3 is a prime number, has nothing in common with that 14. I'm going to do one more, and I just realized I picked kind of stupid numbers here, sorry about that guys. 14 and 7, I'm not going to list out the LCD, and this is what's great about doing lots of practice, is you'll see what the least common denominator is just from having done them so many times before. 7 times 2 is 14, 2 times 2 is 4. Now this one's already a 14th, I leave him alone, he doesn't need to change, 7 minus 4 is 3. And that's really weird. I got the exact same number. That was just total luck. Good luck, guys. I hope this worked out for you.